Welcome to today's Bible study for New Macedonia Baptist Church in Newport, Kentucky. I'm Pastor Randall Baker. Thank you for joining us. Today we'll be on Judges chapter 11. We'll be beginning in, in verse 1. And uh, I would like to remind you that you can send in a gift or offering if you'd like to. P.O. Box 151, Alexandria, Kentucky 41001. And that will go uh, to the church and the running of the church. would like to ask you if you could pray for uh, some folks. My granddaughter Candace, my sister Sylvia's grandson Dylan, and her ex-husband Jim. Uh, C.A. Griffith. Nancy Combs, New, uh, Lucy Mays, Geneva Harold, Pam Hamans, Pam Baker, and Millie Little, uh, Mark, Patty, and Jean Wilson all have some issues. And of course, that's just a few of the people. I've forgotten some of the ones, I'm sure. And uh, but we would just ask if we ask God that He would heal all those that are sick and in need, whatever according to His will, of course. Uh, those that have uh, any kind of uh, sickness or a need, a spiritual, a physical, a financial, or a mental, God can, can work with all things. And of course, ask that God would bless those that have lost loved ones. Ask Him to bless the, the elderly, the widows, and the widowers. Uh, ask Him to bless our church and the congregation. And if we ask Him to bless our church and the congregation of our church and all their families and friends, we'll have it all covered then at that point. And God knows all the names and the uh, needs that we all have. Ask God that He would bless the missionaries, the evangelists, and all those that are doing God's will, all of God's people, wherever they are. And above all, the lost, of course. Let's go ahead and open in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we do thank you, Lord, for this day, this beautiful day today. We ask that you would bless us, Lord, in all things, that you would remove anything from us that would hinder our prayers, Lord. We ask that you be with us and bless each one of those prayer requests made and those that, were, that we didn't name, Lord, that you know need, stands in need of something. We'd ask that you would be with us, Heavenly Father, as we read your word, bless it. Bless our understanding and knowledge of it, Lord, so that we can say something that might please you uh, or might help to further your gospel in some way. And we'll thank you for it. Lord, thank you for this book of Judges, chapter 11, Lord, and all those that we've read previous to this and what we'll read after, Lord. Continue to bless, be with us, guide us, and direct us, and we'll give you all the glory, all of the praise, and all the honor. In Jesus Christ's name we do pray, and amen. As I said, we will be on Judges chapter 11. Today we'll be uh, reading about a man named Jephthah. Last week we read about uh, Abimelech, who was a pretty bad guy, and we'll, we'll see what you think about Jephthah today, whether he's a good guy or a bad guy. Uh, let's go ahead and open with uh, verses 1 and 2, and it says, Now Jephthah the Gileadite was a mighty man of valor, and he was a son of a harlot. And Gilead begat Jephthah. And Gilead's wife bare him sons, and his son, wife's sons grew up, and they thrust out Jephthah, and said unto him, Thou shalt not inherit in our father's house, for thou art the, the son of a strange woman. Now Jephthah, whose name means he opens, uh, was a Gileadite. Last week I spoke some about Gilead, but I'm, I'm going to try to expand on that a little, and if you missed that sermon, maybe this will help out with that, but uh, Gilead was a large portion or bit of land. It was on the east side of the Jordan River that ran all the way up it, and uh, it was divided by a river called Jabbok before Israel uh, conquered it, uh, and that land was coming from Og and Sihon, those two kings, and they both controlled some of Gilead, and after Israel took over from Og and, and Sihon, Gad received most of Gilead, and sometimes in the Bible, Gad is referred to as Gilead. Now also, Maker, the son of Joseph, had a son named Gilead. This Gilead that we're talking right here is a descendant of Maker's son, Gilead. Jephthah was the son of a man named Gilead. And if we read in the, in the verse 1, and of an, an harlot. Uh, and he lived in, an, in the area called Gilead. He was the son of Gilead. He lived in an area called Gilead. The Bible says he was a mighty man of valor. In other words, he was a great warrior. The father of Jephthah, uh, who was named Gilead, as we mentioned earlier, also had a wife as well as uh, he had children by the harlot. 
But Jephthah, he had him by the heart. He also had a wife, and he had sons with that wife, and those sons of Jephthah and his wife, when they were grown, uh, they, they thrust out Jephthah out of the family, out of their father's house, saying that he couldn't inherit anything of their father because his mother was in harlot. And they said that was a strange woman. Verse 3 goes on to say, Then Jephthah fled from his brethren and dwelt in the land of Tob, and there was then there were gathered vain men to Jephthah and went out with him. Now the half brothers of Jephthah, as we said earlier, they must have been uh, pretty valid, but we will also find out a little later that they were they had some help thrusting him out. Because Jephthah had to flee, he had to flee from them. And he went and he lived in a, in a land of Tob, and that was south uh, east near the Dead Sea of where they were, where their house was. And he put together a gang or a, an army of a sort of, of, of vain men. And vain, as you know, means uh, worthless or empty. And I think in this case it implies that they were without morals, that they were probably criminal and bad, just bad men. Verses uh, 4 through 12 says, and it came to pass in process of time that the children of Amnon made war against Israel. And it was so that when the children of Amnon made war against Israel, the elders of Gilead went to fetch Jephthah out of the land of Tob. And they said unto Jephthah, come and be our captain, uh, that we may fight with the children of Amnon. And Jephthah said unto the elders of Gilead, did not ye hate me and expel me out of my father's house? And why are you come unto me now when you are in distress? And the elders of Gilead said unto Jephthah, Therefore we turn again to thee now, that thou mayest go with us and fight against the children of Amnon, and be our head over all the inhabitants of Gilead. And Jephthah said unto the elders of Gilead, If you bring me home again to fight against the children of Amnon, and the Lord deliver them before me, shall I be your head? And the elders of Gilead said unto Jephthah, The Lord be witness between us, if we do not so according to thy words. Then Jephthah went with the elders of Gilead, and the people made him head and captain over them. And Jephthah uttered all these words before the Lord in Mizpah. And Jephthah sent messengers unto the king, the children of Amnon, saying, What hast thou to do with me? that thou art come against me to fight in my land. So now Amnon made war against Israel. And Amnon, Amnon, just a little history on Amnon. Amnon was one of the sons of Lot. And Lot was the nep nephew of Abraham. Amnon and Moab both were uh, brothers, and they were from incest with Lot and his daughters. Uh, the country of Amnon <clears throat> uh, pardon me, ran along the east coast of East Manasseh and, uh, and Gad and Reuben. Uh, there was no military leader in Israel at this time. There was no judge at this particular time. So the elders of Gilead sent to Jephthah, asking him to come and be the head, to be the judge or the general over them. And Jephthah reminded them that they had hated him. They had helped to thrust him out of his uh, family home. And that they hated him. They said, he said, you had hated me. Uh, the elders said, uh, yeah, we did then, but, uh, but now we, we need you now. And now we're, gonna, we're turning to you to lead us and to fight Amnon for us. Uh, they said he would be the head over them. Jephthah, he tells the men of Gilead, and he, and he, he just kind of says, if I do come and I do fight and defeat Amnon, Maybe you'll just thrust me out again, all over again, or just run me out of there off again when we're, when we're free and we're, we're clear of Amnon. And the elders vowed not to do that. They vowed to God that they would keep their word and make him the head. Matter of fact, they did go ahead and make him the head. Now Jephthah and the elders went to Mizpah, and Mizpah means watch. So that was kind of the idea there. They went to stand before God so God could witness and God could see and he could watch what was going on. And they spoke the words of their agreement before God. And right away, Jephthah started against Amnon. He started, he went right away by sending messengers to the king of Amnon, asking him why, why was he making war with Israel? Why did he come and, and go against Israel? Verses 13 through 18 says, And the king of the children of Amnon answered unto the messengers of Jephthah, saying, Israel took away my land. 
when they came up out of Egypt from Arnon, even unto Jabrook, and unto Jordan. Now, therefore, restore these lands again peacefully. And Jephthah sent messengers again unto the king of the children of Amna, and said unto him, Thus saith Jephthah, Is Israel... Israel, rather, took not away the land of Moab, nor the land of the children of Ammon. <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, verse 15 says, And said unto him, Thus said Jephthah, Israel took not away the land of Moab, nor the land of the children of Ammon. But when Israel came up from Egypt and walked through the wilderness into the Red Sea and came to Kadesh, then Israel sent messengers unto the king of Edom, saying, Let me, I pray thee, pass through thy land. But the king of Edom would not hearken thereto, and in like manner they sent it unto the king of Moab, but he would not consent, and Israel abode in Kadesh. Then they went along through the wilderness and encompassed the land of Edom and the land of Moab, and came by the east side of the land of Moab and pitched on the other side of Arnon, but came not within the border of Moab, for Arnon was the border of Moab. So the king of Amnon sent a message to Jephthah. He sent one back and he said, making a false claim that the land of Gilead had belonged to him. And when Israel came up from Egypt, that they took this land from them. But in truth, it, that didn't happen at all. When Israel captured the land of Gilead, it was, uh, it was occupied by Og and Sihon, who were Amorite kings. Not Ammonite kings, but Amorite kings. Also, uh, Jephthah told him that when they came up from Egypt, that they wanted to pass peaceably through the borders of Edom and through the borders of Amnon, uh, uh, well, Amnon's brother Moab's land, rather, but he refused to let them pass through their lands. Verses 19 to 22 says, And Israel sent messengers unto Sihon, king of the Amorites, the king of Heshbon, uh, and Israel said unto him, Let us pass, we pray thee, through thy lands, Unto my, into my place. But Sihon trusted not Israel to pass through his coast, but Sihon gathered all his people together and pitched in Jeosh and fought against Israel. And the Lord God of Israel delivered Sihon and all his people into the hand of Israel, and they smote them. So Israel possessed all the land of the Amorites, the inhabitants of that country. And they possessed all the coast of the Amorites from Arnon even into Jabbok, and from the wilderness even unto Jordan. So Jephthah then told the king of Amnon that they had sent messengers to Sihon, the king of Hezbon of the Amorites, uh, to let them pass through their land on the way to Canaan, the same as he had done to Eden and, and uh, Moab, but uh, Sihon also refused them passage. Then he came out to fight against them. He got all his people together. He gathered everyone up, and he came out to fight against Israel. And God gave Israel the victory against the Amorites, and they possessed that land. They possessed the land that had belonged to the Amorites. Not the Ammonites, but the uh, 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 Amorites. Verse 23 through 28. So now the Lord God of Israel hath dispossessed the Amorites, from before his people Israel, and shouldest thou possess it? Wilt not thou possess that which Shemosh thy God giveth thee to possess? So whomsoever the Lord our God shall drive uh, out from before us, them will we possess. And now art thou anything better than Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab? Did he ever strive against Israel, or did he ever fight against them? While Israel dwelt in Hezbon, in her towns, and in Aor, in her towns, and in all the cities that be alone by the coast of Arnon, three hundred years, why therefore did ye not recover them within that time? Wherefore I have not sinned against thee, but thou doest me wrong to war against me. The Lord, the judge, be judged this day between the children of Israel and the children of Amnon. Howbeit the king of the children of, Ammonite, of Amnon rather hearken not unto the words of Jephthah which he sent him. So he talked about to him there that uh, that Jephthah tells the king of, of Amnon that God had defeated the Amorites and gave Israel that land, and now should they give it to him and the Am Ammonites? 
He tells Ammon that they should be satisfied, be happy, and live in the land that, that they suppose that their God, Shemesh, had given them. Uh, Jephthah says that they will keep the land that God has given Israel. Now, Israel says he had done, he said they had done nothing to Balak, the king of uh, Moab, but yet Balak tried to have Israel cursed. If you remember, he called it Balaam or Balaam, and he had him come and try to curse them. And he tells the king of Ammon that Israel has done nothing against him either, against Ammon either, and that they're no better than Moab to attack and fight against Israel now. He also says that the two and a half tribes had lived there for a long time. People have been there for over 300 years now. Why did he wait so long to try to take back the land if he believed it belonged to him? Jephthah told him that, that, that he, the king of Ammon, was in the wrong. But Ammon... He didn't listen to what Jephthah had to say. He didn't care at all what Jephthah said. He already had his mind made up what he was going to do and what his plans were. Uh, 29 through 33 says, Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jephthah, and he passed over Gilead and Manasseh, and passed over Mizpah of Gilead, and from Mizpah of Gilead he passed over unto the children of Amnon. And Jephthah vowed a vow unto the Lord and said, If thou shalt without fail deliver the children of Amnon into mine hands, then it shall be that whatsoever cometh forth of the doors of my house to meet me, when I return in peace from the children of Amnon, shall surely be the Lord's, and I will offer it up for a burnt offering. So Jephthah passed over unto the children of Ammon to fight against them, and the Lord delivered them into his hands. And he smote them unto a roar, even till thou comest to Manith, even twenty cities, pardon me, and unto the plain of the vineyards with a very great slaughter. Thus the children of Ammon were subdued before the children of Israel. Jephthah, He's a very curious character. He's, he's a complicated guy because we know that he had put together a band of vain men uh, that he, that he uh, then he vowed uh, to God. And now the Spirit of the Lord comes to him and he goes to meet Amnon to go to war against them. And you just got to think, is he a good guy? Is he a bad guy? What is he? Now, now he does a very foolish thing. He makes a vow to God that if God would give him the victory over Amnon, that he would offer as a burnt sacrifice the first thing, the very first thing that came out of his house to meet him. So God did give Israel a great victory. He gave Jephthah a great victory, Jephthah, a great victory over Amnon. Because they slaughtered, the Bible says, they slaughtered uh, many of the Ammonites and they drove the rest of them out of Gilead and out of Israel. Verse 34 and 35 says, uh, And Jephthah came to Mizpah unto his house, and behold, his daughter came out to meet him with timbrels and with dancers, dances, and she was his only child beside her. He had neither son nor daughter. And it came to pass when he saw her that he rent his clothes and, and said, Alas, my daughter, thou hast brought me very low, and thou art one of them that trouble me. For I have opened my mouth unto the Lord, and I cannot go back. Now, now we can see why this vow was so foolish. Uh, we don't know who or what Jephthah had expected to come out of his house to meet him. Maybe one of his servants, probably that's what he thought. Maybe his dog or his wife or his cat or something. Uh, uh, anything would come out to meet him. Meeting would have been bad, though, because... Uh, God doesn't accept certain things as burnt offerings. Uh, an unclean animal like a dog or a cat he wouldn't have uh, uh, accepted, and he certainly doesn't accept human sacrifice. Jephthah's daughter, his only child, and we, we can see from this that he loved her dearly, but I think he was a really selfish man, but he loved her dearly, and she came out to meet him. She was dancing and happy and, and playing a tim, timbrel, and that is, of course, a tambourine. Now, he insisted uh, instead, rather, instead of this, instead of admitting that he made a, a foolish mistake there, he blames his daughter for being the one that troubled him, for being the one that came out. He said, you're the one that troubles me now. Verse 36 through 40 says, uh, And she said unto him, My father, if thou hast opened thy mouth unto the Lord, do to me according to that which hath proceeded out of thy mouth. 
For as much as the Lord hath taken vengeance for thee of thine enemies, even of the children of Amnon. And she said unto her father, Let this thing be done for me. Let me alone two months, that I may go up and down upon the mountains and bewail my virginity, I and my fellows. And he said, Go. And he sent her away for two months. And she went with her companions and bewailed her virginity upon the mountains. And it came to pass at the end of two months that she returned unto her father, who did with her according to his vow which she had vowed, and she knew no man. And it was a custom in Israel that the daughters of Israel went yearly to lament the daughter of Japheth, Japheth the Gilead, Gileadite, four days in a year. That's a very sad, very sad ending. Uh, his daughter was obviously a, a better person than he was, because she said, if you've made a vow to God, you have to keep it. And, and the Bible makes it clear that if you make a vow to God, that you have to keep it. That God won't hold you guiltless that doesn't keep it. So he was stuck. He was between a rock and a hard place there. She did ask one favor of him, though. She asked uh, for him to let her uh, live for two more months so that her and her friends could go up uh, on the mountains back and forth and go back and forth up and down the mountains and grieve for the fact that she would never be married, that she would never be able to have children. Now we read in uh, verse 2 where Japheth had been driven out of his father's house by his brothers. Now he, in a sense, now had driven out his daughter from his, her father's house, from his house, and, and actually from her life. After she had returned home, after the two months, uh, he kept his vow, and he offered her just as he had vowed. And the Bible says that a custom, a custom was then started in Israel that the women, uh, the daughters of Israel, would once a, a year for four days uh, go to mourn the fate of Jephthah's daughter. Now, I asked you a question earlier. I said, have you thought Jephthah was a good guy or whether he was a bad guy? I think he was somewhere in between. Uh, just like all the rest of us, already made mistakes. In Hebrews chapter 11, we know that as the heroes of the faith uh, chapter. And there's some great men and there's some great women that are mentioned in that. And uh, in, in that chapter, there's some great people that are mentioned. In uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 32, it talks about Jephthah. And him, along with Gideon, Barak, who was with Deborah, and the winning in the war with Deborah, the general there, it was, talks about David, it talks about Samson, and Samuel. And they're all heralded for their faith. And Jephthah, as I said, is included right in there. Uh, so I guess, uh, you know, he was faithful. He was certainly faithful to God. He was faithful to his word. He kept the faith. And God had chosen him to lead Israel at that time. Uh, but you know what? I, I've said this to the church many times. You can't make a deal with God. You don't have anything to deal with. You don't have anything to offer for your end of the deal. Jephthah made a very, very bad deal. He made a very foolish vow, and he had to give up the thing that, that meant most to him in the whole world. Uh, I guess the faithfulness of it is that he did keep his vow, and he did uh, offer his daughter. Uh, but, of course, I don't think God accepted that offering of the daughter, but rather the faithfulness, I guess, is what God uh, accepted. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, next week, of course, we'll be uh, talking a little bit more about Jephthah and uh, some men of uh, Ephraim and the death of Jephthah. But uh, join us for that and, and read that and see what uh, God will give you. God will, will give you a blessing for reading and studying his word. Let's go ahead and close in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we do thank you, Lord. We thank you here for the words that you've given us here in uh, Judges chapter 11. Thank you for all you have done for us. Thank you for the examples that were set forth in uh, Israel and in the books of uh, the Old Testament. Thank you for all the wonderful things you did. Thank you for the good things that you did for them, Lord. And also, thank you for the times that you judged them, Lord. Thank you for what you do for us and the times that we are being judged as well, Lord. We thank you for all perfect uh, things that you do. We know that you are the righteous judge, Lord. We know that you, that you know all things. And all of your judgments are righteous and perfect and holy, Lord. We thank you for it. We ask you to continue. Bless, be with us, guide and direct us, and keep us. Be your will, Lord. And again, we will give you all the glory, all the praise, and all the honor. In Jesus Christ's name we do pray, and amen.